Welcome to another video from Auto Garage Life and today we're doing another winter maintenance job on the Mercedes SL. Today we're going to be lubricating all the seals that make up or are in the convertible top, around about the trunk and the doors. And to do that we're going to be using this. So this stuff you get it direct from Mercedes Benz. I don't know if you can see that. It's special glide metal fluid, which is basically special sliding compound lubrication oil. Mm -hmm. So it's basically almost like silicon lube for the seals. This is a 30ml bottle and this one came direct from Mercedes Benz. Now, I didn't buy this. This came with this car when I bought it. The gentleman that owned the car before me very kindly included this within the sale, so he never actually used it. I'm guessing you can use the same stuff silicon lubricant and um, WD-40 Rand or something similar but since we've got this bottle might as well use it and I have heard that this little bottle here is £30 from UK Mercedes-Benz dealers so quite an expensive little bit but if it makes you feel better getting the genuine brand go and get it but probably for a five or six pounds you could get a bottle of silicon spray that would do the job just the same so we're going to start off in the trunk I'll do all the seals there and we'll partially put the top down and do the seals that make up in between the window here and the top and down the C-pillar. And we'll put the roof all the way down and we'll do the seals that come out here and on the front windscreen at the top there. And then just for, just for fun, we'll do all the ones around the windows as well. So let's crack on. All right, so we're going to start off the main seal that goes round the windscreen here. I'm just going to use a microfiber cloth and dab some of this on. You can use rubber gloves if you wish to do this. But I don't have any left, so we'll just go with this cloth. All we're doing is a few little drops of this. A few little drops. That's pretty sticky stuff, I must admit. Not too much onto the edge of the cloth and then around this seal I'll just start. And at this point a microphone decided to die on me so I'll just voice over this for a little bit. So all I'm doing is rubbing this across this, the, the main seal here, getting in between the two kind of um, lips of the seal but I decided just to put the stuff directly on to the seal and just drag it across like, like a bead of silicon if you like. Just makes life easier. I've seen people using rubber gloves for this. As I said before, I don't have any to hand, so cloth it is. And just massaging that into the, the rubber there. Very nice. Now, I've seen people on the web saying this will stop leaks, so this will prevent the seals from degrading sooner than they normally would. So it will stop any kind of future leaks coming through, any cracks within the seals if you maintain it with this stuff. What it won't do, of course, is it'll, it won't repair any leaks that you've got because you want to see how I repaired the leaks that I had coming through this main seal. Go into the trunk, I'll leave the video up in the cards, um, but you can also get leaks from any seal in the roof and sometimes it might just require replacement of that seal or sometimes you can get away with what I did to repair the main seal at the back. So go and check that video out if you haven't done so already. And a lot of the leaks in these cars come from, see where my hand is there? There's a drain hole in that part and it usually gets clogged with leaves or gunk or muck or something like that. And sometimes if you clean those out, it stops leaks getting into your trunk. But what we're doing here is we're maintaining and prolonging the life of these rubber seals by using this stuff. Uh, and it keeps it all nice and supple and it will prevent them getting hard and, and brittle and cracking over time. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll put the top down fully and we'll do the seals for the windscreen. Now, this is my favourite bit of this car. Watch this. It's like a one guy on the internet calls it a, a ballet of, of movement here when the, the, the top goes down. It's amazing watching this. It amazes me every time I do it. Brilliant engineering. Hard top in the boot. We didn't even know it was there. Absolutely fantastic. So, 
what I'll try to do here is I'm getting rid of yeah look at that brilliant everything works <clears throat> the seal just above my head there oh. a couple of couple of cold revs there careful what you're doing this engine's not warm just settle down all right so now we're going to do this top seal This one here, the C pillar meets the car, meets the car, what an idiot, where the C pillar slot sits. We'll do this one and we'll get the full one of these when we put the top up. I'm just going to give a light bit to the window sills as well. Right, so while the top's down, we can see that seal there for the C pillar. So we'll just get what we can see of that while the top's in this position. If I press the, the button to raise the top partially up for the trunk access, you can see more of this, which I do. And I do that off camera just to get the bottom lip of it. But in the main, you can see the most of this seal when you're sitting like this. And while the top's stored away in the trunk, we'll get that other seal, which is just above my hand there on the kind of tonneau cover. This one right here. And we'll just grab that. Oops, dropped a little bit. No problem, just wipe straight off. And we'll just get both sides of this one whilst it's in this position. Put the top up halfway. Right now, this part is some people ask quite a lot about this in the web. How do you get the top to stay up halfway? So, when you do it this way and just stop pressing the button there, what will happen is after a few seconds, a car will, car will bong at you saying roofs in operation or about to close or something like that. And within a few seconds, the roof will just drop. Like so. Right, I'm not pressing the button there, the roof just does that after a few seconds. So you're kind of stuck with it in that half open position. So what you can do is, before it drops, you can either put a bit of wood or something between the roof and the window, the windscreen, and it'll just stop it. But what I decided to do was just do it with the engine running. And when you do it with the engine running, the roof will stay in that position for as long as you need, well, I'm not going to say as long as you need to I believe there is a time limit, but it's certainly enough time to do the the uh, rubber seals that we're doing here. So again, similarly, if I drop it back that way and then turn the engine off, a few seconds time, the roof will drop back into the trunk. And there's not much you can do about it unless you physically stop it with something. So like I said, I just start the engine and I wanted the car to warm up anyway because it's not been on for a wee while so it's not going to do any harm to sit idling for a few minutes so I'll just stop the, the roof right there and as you can see it opens up the seals at the top of the C pillar and on the roof part itself so you can access them and, and put all your silicon lubricant all over the, the rubber and I do believe the time limit is about seven minutes sitting like this with the engine on don't know if that's true. I've not tested it myself. It might depend on how strong your rear battery is or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. But you'll see by the length of time I took for this, which is only a couple of minutes in total. It's not that long. Um, the roof didn't move at all. So perfectly safe. And it will bong at you before it's about to go down. So don't have your fingers in between the, the joints or anything like that. But it's, it's perfectly okay for what I did here. Again, disclaimer. Do it at your own risk. Your car might be different for some weird reason. Mine was fine. I'm just sure.
done all the seals around the trunk, whole way round, all the sea pillar seals. Oh, battery died again, sorry. So all the sea pillar seals, all the tonneau cover seals, the roof seals, both on the bottom and the top of the glass, the windscreen seals have all been done here. And that's it. Every, every single, I've done the windows as well actually, just when we were at it. So that's every single seal treated with the silicon lubricant. I'll probably do this again in the springtime once it comes out of its hibernation mode. But this stuff, it was a lot thicker than I'd thought, so perhaps it's warranted with the price tag. Again, I think it was £30. I've used about a third of the bottle for one application, all seals. So probably good for two or three or maybe even four applications of it. So that might last you a couple of years. So up to you. If you want to go to Mercedes and buy that stuff, feel free um, you need to pay the expense of it. But it does seem quite thick and decent stuff. But put your comments below if there's an aftermarket, another brand or a version that you would use on convertible top seals um, as opposed to Mercedes. But I would link it below, but they don't have an online store that I can see that you can buy it from. So it's just a case of phoning up the dealer. So there we go. That makes you feel a bit better. You've done what you can to preserve the life of the rubber seals. Can't ask much more of that. And uh, that's us good for a few months. What I did forget to show was I pressed the red button there at one point and to bring the roof up into the access position and I just got underneath some of the, the seals that we couldn't quite reach before. Also, I did those seals around the elephant ears. Did that off camera and that was basically everything I think so that's all of it covered. So stay tuned to the channel, I've got a lot more jobs coming up on this car. I've got new wing mirrors to fit, I'm going to do brake caliper painting, I'm going to do um, alloy wheel painting, might leave that to the spring, don't know yet. But look at that, the seals are even looking brand new when you see them now after that stuff. They look very very dark and glossy which is good to see. So Few more very, a few more jobs coming up on the channel, not least of which will be this bad boy here, which the eagle-eyed might have noticed is not a part for the SL. It's a part for the BMW, it's a window regulator. Very difficult to get, you can't get these aftermarket for the BMW 3 Series GT F34. I had to go direct to, well I got them on bmwsupply.co.uk or you can get them from the main dealer but i need to fix that very very soon which will probably be in the next video so hit the like button subscribe comment and i'll see you in the next video